it's time to talk about uh, Rene Descartes. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, Rene Descartes is considered usually the first modern philosopher. And this is, again, um, uh, this presentation is not even like the way that I would normally present modern philosophy because, you know, critically, uh, there's a problem with, with, with uh, presenting it in, in, in this way, but, uh, but this is the standard, I mean, I'm still not going to give you a really standard version, uh, but um, in my normal treatment of modern philosophy, I de-emphasize Descartes quite a bit uh, and emphasize uh, some things in David Hume and Kant uh, and Hegel, but I'm going to try to wrap in the Hegel stuff um, and connect that to Descartes. And I think this is going to work out uh, pretty good, uh, but it's important for understanding Dussel to understand um, Descartes and and uh, this idea that he began to he, he began a new phase of philosophy in European history, and then Dussel is going to argue against this. Okay, so uh, I will do my best to uh, kind of inform. The, the reading of Dussel. So Rene Descartes um, uh, <clears throat> his first book was the Discourse on the Method. It had the geometry in it and I've I've discussed that before. <clears throat> and remember that the geometry is the XY uh, axes and doing making algebra and geometry come together. So like an, an equation can represent, represent a line or an equation can represent a circle. And if we go into three dimensions, an equation can represent a sphere. And uh, you know we can combine these things in lots of different ways. <clears throat> and that's gonna be very significant. Um, <coughs> excuse me for understanding um, the, the kind of one of the typical like pop culture kind of analogies that comes up quite naturally here. <clears throat> okay. So um, the geometry, keep that in your mind and, and I'm gonna reference that right here. Um, Meditations on First Philosophy is a much better work, or let's say it's a, it's a work that still has a lot of value. The Discourse on Method, um, like with Francis Bacon, is kind of struggling to make this transition between the Aristotelian scholastic way of thinking and moving into what they obviously were aware of is some new phase, but they didn't really know what that new, new phase is. Uh, but the meditations on first philosophy stands on its own in a way uh, that endures over the centuries since it was written and, and is still of, of good value to go back to and, and to think through again. It is a series of five meditations. And so it's written in the style <clears throat> of um, an old uh, devotional book. Uh, so there were these books written by um, religious teachers who would ask you, you know, sort of give a short um, description of some theoretical ideas and give you something to meditate about. And then there would be a series of meditations in a book and people would use this and they would read, read the short passage and then they would spend the rest of the day just, just 
meditating upon that one chapter. And then the next day, go back and read another chapter and spend the day meditating on that. Or maybe you did it once a week, or whatever the case may be. The meditations is written like that. So you're supposed to read a chapter and then rethink it in your own mind uh, the way that that Descartes describes it and then maybe uh, you know come to your own sort of inflection of of the basic ideas that he's he's laying out and he begins uh, the first meditation by saying uh, that he's going to start by by doubting everything um, And, you know, and he describes, uh, you know, falling into a dream and then you, you might, and when you're in a dream, you think the dream is so real, but then when you wake up, you realize that it was all a fantasy. And so what he gathers from this is that as we look around, like right now for you, as you're watching this video and you're staring into your screen and the experience has all the all the signs all the indications of being a real waking experience but what if you were dreaming this right this very moment how do you know that this is not a dream what tells you that it isn't a dream and uh, especially the way that Descartes describes it, there's really nothing to tell you that it isn't a dream. You very well could be dreaming. You could be dreaming uh, that you are, you know, taking college classes and have this course in cultural diversity and you have to watch this video and you're wondering what the point is here. Um, but maybe that's all a dream. Maybe it's much later in your life and you're just dreaming of being the age that you are now and being back in, in college. Um, but you're really later on in your life and you're just having a dream of reminiscence. How could you tell the difference? So what this introduces uh, for Descartes at least is, is a, state of radical doubt. And so he wants to doubt everything and not take anything for granted, not make any assumptions, and then find out what really can he know without making any assumptions. Uh, and what he starts with is what we call the cogito, ego cogito. And, and, and he wrote this in Latin. So, uh, because that's, um, that was the scholarly language coming out of the Aristotelian scholastic period uh, and Latin being the, the language of lawyers as, I, of, as I've spoken of before. Uh, didn't matter what country li you lived in, in Europe, official business was done in Latin and the same with books. Books were written in Latin. So he's writing this in Latin and, um, and that's where ego cogito comes from, which means I am thinking. So he starts with I am thinking because even if he is dreaming, uh, he knows that he is thinking. There's some thinking going on. He is experiencing thinking. And he's experiencing himself as thinking, which means he exists. So if I'm thinking, and let's put ourselves in that place, and that's what the meditation invites you to do, is suppose that you're not sure if you are thinking. And I'm going to suppose, I don't, or I don't know if I'm, I'm dreaming. But I think, well, I am thinking, and if I am thinking, 
then I exist. That's the ego sum. So I exist. So he thinks that through this meditation, uh, you can establish at least this, that you, that I exist. The ego exists. Because the ego is thinking. So at the bare minimum, the I, the ego, is a thinking thing, and he wants to say a thinking substance, like in this Aristotelian way that I that I went through Aristotelianism um, before. So he wants to say that the ego is a thinking substance at bare minimum. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, so that's something to think about. What do you think? Does that really work? Does that get you out of a situation where you seriously consider that you might be dreaming? Does that really convince you that you exist? Because maybe it's just merely a dream and it's just all ephemeral and you don't even exist. I mean, that's what he wants to get to is that kind of radical doubt. Um, All right, so, so, so let's think about that and then I'll, I'll start a new video to carry on from there.